So you have the um, Pueblo people that lived out in the open, you have the cliff dwellers, you have the Diné, and later on you have the Anasaza. The Pueblo people became easy prey to the Anasaza, and they were enslaved. When the Anasaza were to destroyed, they were completely destroyed. There was not any Anasaza left to this day. There's no such pe people as descendants of Anasaza. <laughs> In our traditional teaching as Diné, there are many areas that are available for discussion among our people. And I was very fortunate when I was very young to have uh, many elders in that in uh, my family that were so very willing to share the uh, things that they knew and the things that they had come to understand. And so it is that that's what we do with the uh, presentations that we provide. And so in the language of our people, is what they used to tell me. That meant, listen and understand what we're telling you so that down the road you can relay that to other people. So the things that we share here at the Namo Traditional Teaching is not our opinion. It's information that was shared with us by our old people. And uh, it's nothing that we have uh, made up in any way, but we do present it in a language, which is English, the best we can. There are many words that are not available in the English language when some of these things are uh, taught to us or shared with us among our Diné. And so, just to kind of uh, a quick recap, the Diné is what we call ourselves, Diné. But later on, we became known by other names than that. One of them, of course, is Navajo. The word Navajo actually was a name that was originally given to us by the people that we call Anasaza. And originally, from their language, it was pronounced Anabejo, is the way that they referred to our people, Anabejo. And that meant field people. Dak etane is uh, what we were called by the Anasaza. And our people did trade with the uh, Anasaza people. And as I mentioned before, they were here for a very brief period of time. When our people came here into the greater portion of this part of the continent and now recognized as the Southwest, our people came from the east across the great rivers. And as they came across, they ended up into what is present day Southern Colorado. And as they talk about in the traditional teachings, they say there were already people here. There were a lot of different people and uh, the ones that they came in contact with the most often were the ones that they called the cliff dwellers. Now it has to be understood, but the Diné, as a society of people, when they first came out here, they were fleeing from uh, disputes and that, and just so many disagreements that were among those people. And so they broke away and they came west. And when they uh, arrived here, of course, their, their principal god has always been the speaker of peace. Hastiyakti is what we call that being. Some people just call him talking God, but it's much more than that. And then the other ones, there are 12 of those, and they call Hashtajawan, is uh, the way they say it. Hashtajawan. That means have people that will teach you peace in the home. And so it was a very peaceful society of uh, people that the Dene, the early Dene, were. And it was that uh, they were peacemakers. And so they also were peacekeepers. And then the story is told that when they came into the area, there were many different people here, and there were many of them that would be uh, fighting wars against one another. And so as they continued to live among the people that they came in contact with, they recognized two different groups. One was the cliff dwellers, and the other was the, uh, the Pueblo people. They are not the same. They are completely different. And it is that uh, the way the story goes that the people who were of the cliff dwelling, the cliff dwellers, they became the Neh. They joined up and became people known as the Neh. And they have their own clan families and clan groups. And the, the way that the government operated in those early times was that each clan group had their first man and their first woman. And that was their clan leaders. And every one of them had a different first man and first woman. All of the clan groups and that. So if you compare it to something that might be understood is that uh, in the Greek society, they had their government, which had the city-states. Well, this was pretty much like uh, that particular form of government. They had representatives in that, and they had a council. And so it was that uh, 
the cliff dwellers, the majority of the cliff dwellers, if not all of them, became the Neh with their own clan families and their own clan groups. And it is that uh, they are completely different than the Pueblo people. The Pueblo people uh, are the ones that uh, we refer to as uh, Ayakin, is what they were called during that time. And they were recognized as the ones that lived out in the open. The cliff dwellers are the ones that lived in the, uh, along the, the rock faces and the cliffs and underneath the cliffs and so on. But these were the cliff dwellers, and they are the ones that became the Neh, and there are many of them. It might even be that we could give them some types of references, the saying the Fremont people, the Mugion people. There are many other people in that, that sometimes people say, we don't know what happened to them, they vanished. They did not vanish, they became the Neh. And so it was that the, the people that were known as the Neh, there were many of them. In fact, some people say there was as many as maybe one and a half million of people that became the Neh, and they were the greatest number. Later on, a group of uh, other people came into the area, and those are the ones that we call an Asaza. Those are the people that do things different than us as the Neh. And so Anna is that's what it's called. It does not mean an enemy. It means those that do things differently. Uh, Zaza is uh, people of that time. Even our own people, we refer to them as the Neh, Nehi Zaza. And so the names are very important. So you have the, uh, the Pueblo people that lived out in the open. You have the cliff dwellers. You have the Deneh. And later on, you have the Anasaza. Now, the Anasaza, when we were told when uh, our people first encountered them, of course, they, were, they had come from the south, is what we were told. Shada'ahte wa e'ade wa tazni is what we are told. And that means they came from the south. And so it was, there was a place. Sadako is uh, the place where they, there were already some Pueblo people, what is the place now called the um, Chaco Canyon. But it is there that there were already Pueblo people that lived there, a certain group. And it is that uh, people have to understand there are a number of different groups of Pueblo people. They all spoke different things and different languages. They all have different ceremonies and they all have different ways of the th things that they do and the things that they recognize in their particular villages and Pueblo locations. And so the uh, teaching of our people is that they were all different in so many ways. Some people of the groups, they maybe did the uh, snake dance, others did the buffalo dance, others did the, uh, the deer dance and so many other things that are so different, even their languages and that. And so it was that uh, it was not just one group of people, but the uh, teaching of our people, the things that we are told, is that uh, the Pueblo people became easy prey to the Anasaza, and they were enslaved. And they were the ones that, were, that had these uh, places where was, the Anasaza established themselves, but the central location was the place of crying, the Chaco Canyon area, Chaco Chaza. And so it was that uh, they were there for a few hundred years, less than 300 years is, is a good estimate. But uh, they are not cliff dwellers and they are not Pueblo. They are Anasaza and completely different. And the uh, cliff dwellers, of course, they built their homes in the, um, in the rocks. And uh, when they became the Neh, after a period of time, the holy people informed these the Neh that uh, were cliff dwellers at one time, they were told, move out of those rock and mud structures and make your homes out in the open. And so that's what they did. And even some of the, uh, the ruins and that, they have reconstructed so many of them. Even Mesa Verde, it was just a pile of rocks at one time. It's all been reconstructed to some point. And it is that that's what people go to see. And they think that those are just the way that they were left. And that's not so. And so it is that uh, you have to ask questions. You have to ask important questions. And it is that um, you must get answers. You can't just speculate. And these are the things that we are told by the old people. And so the uh, teaching of our people is that when the Anasaza were to be destroyed, they were completely destroyed. There was not any Anasaza left. And it is that uh, to this day, there's no such pe people as descendants of Anasaza. There's the way that we are told, which means they were completely destroyed and there was no evidence of them ever really being in the area. Many of the people that were slaves uh, to the uh, Anasaza, 
When the hard times came, they abandoned them and they ran off and escaped into places with canyons and went and joined other uh, people. And uh, there's stories of some of the Pueblo people coming actually and becoming Diné themselves. So you have people that are the Pueblo people that are now recognized among the Diné as an actual clan group. For example, the uh, Nasteja Diné, and those are the Zuni people. And there's others in that that are also recognized as people that became uh, Diné. Kintichini is another one. And so there are bunches of uh, clan families in that that became Diné. And then others, of course, went down and hid into the, uh, the Grand Canyon for some length of time until things settled down before they returned to the pueblos that they had originally occupied. And uh, I think even uh, our people uh, as recent as the 1800s still referred to these uh, people that went and hid out in the canyons and that uh, to uh, get away from the Anasaza. Uh, they called them Kahiaja Tatsa. And so it is that uh, some of those Pueblo families and that Pueblo uh, groups and that uh, were recognized by that name. And uh, even Manuelito, one of our war chief, referred to the um, Hopi people as Gahiaja, Gaspaha, because they're one of the ones that were recognized as they went and hid in the Grand Canyon. And uh, so this is not to uh, cause any kind of animosity that I share this information with you. It is that these are the things that we are told, and it is necessary to ask one another, find out from the old people. And so this is also another reason why we at Navajo Traditional Teaching, we don't like to talk about other tribes. We wish that they could take the time and educate their people and share information with us. That's the purpose. It's not in any way to cause any kind of bad, bad, bad feelings and that toward one another. We need to be united in finding out the, uh, the correct information and to be able to share and to come to some conclusions. And so it is that there's a lot of things that, is, that we could share with you. And so it is that uh, we share with you the things that we are told by our old people. And those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay.